Feel like you're being pulled in a thousand directions? Let's fix that. Download your free rebalancing toolkit and learn how to design an optimized week that lets you feel like you have it all. Get the goods at brilliantbalance.net slash have it all. I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. Hello, and welcome to episode five of the Brilliant Balance podcast. Hey, are you ready to be brilliant today? (laughs) I know I am. This was a yoga day in my workout schedule, and somehow yoga days are always my best days. I don't know. It's like magical. There's something about everything just getting worked out in the morning. I got to do it today when it was still dark outside. I get up really early. Some of you might do this too. It's a it's a secret working mom ninja trick, right, to get up really early and have a few moments of quiet before the house springs to life. Um, So I always work out early in the morning, but today was a yoga day and um, I keep the lights really dim. I have this app that I love that that gives a different yoga workout every day. They're my best days. I come into the whole day feeling really centered. So also, (laughs) no tears or fighting today before school with anybody. It was smooth. We made it to the bus on time. There was hot coffee. You know, all told, it was a pretty good start. So I'm ready for you. And I hope your day got off to that good of a start too. If it didn't, try yoga. Hot tip on getting things started. And it's a good thing because today we're going to talk about the opposite of that. We're going to talk about the idea of toughing it out and when that's a good idea and when it's just not. Because I think my point of view is we've bought into a little bit of mythology around the power of toughing it out, the the pride that we should take in toughing it out. And it's not really always serving us very well. You know, even if you think about the inspirational quotes in this arena, um, famous ones like winners never quit and quitters never win, or, you know, pain is temporary, quitting lasts forever, or we can do hard things. There are so many messages about how quitting is kind of for the weak and how the strong and the powerful, you know, manage to tough it out no matter what the circumstances. That kind of leads to this suck it up and tough it out culture. And what I can say for sure after working with hundreds of high achieving women is that we are taking this way too literally. You know, and because of that, we're suffering. I want to talk today about some of the arenas where this plays out so you can find yourself maybe in one of them and see if there's a place where you've bought into this. And then I want to talk about a few questions that we can ask ourselves when we hear ourselves committing to toughing it out that can really shorten up that cycle pretty dramatically. So what are some of the arenas? Well, one of them might be a work assignment where you have a bad boss or a bad connection to the actual work. Um, The business is in trouble. You know, that's a place where maybe we want to tough it out. Maybe it's a dynamic in our marriage um, where this plays out. Maybe it is living in a city that we just can't stand because we're there for work or we're there until a child graduates from school and we kind of feel settled in, but it's not really where we want to be. Maybe it's a business that isn't growing fast enough and we think, if I just stick with this as an entrepreneur longer, even though I'm working 24-7 and the business isn't delivering and the profits aren't coming, you know, that maybe if I just stick with it long enough, that gold is just around that corner. Honestly, maybe it's just the pace we're running at, that life is really busy, it's kind of crazy, and we think, I just have to tough it out through this phase because it's gonna, it's got to end any day now. But then it's not ending, and it's not ending, and it's not ending. You know, whatever it is, something is not working right? We're not happy, we're not satisfied, but we kind of feel like we have to slog it out or we're being weak. 
Why do we believe that? What kind of merit badge are we expecting for our thick skin and our persistence and our willingness to suffer? I'm not sure there's a merit badge coming. I'm not sure that survival should be our only goal. And so what I've found as I've you know, dug into this with the women who I work with is that there are a few questions that we have to ask ourselves when we start to fall into this pattern. You know, when we hear ourselves saying, I'm just going to tough it out. I'm just going to slog it out. I'm just going to make this work. Um, I can do this. I can make it, right? Those kind of like endurance metaphors for reaching the finish line, even though we hate everything about the journey. There are a few questions that if we ask ourselves, they can really shorten up that cycle of suffering pretty dramatically because they tend to get to the hidden reasons why we've resigned ourselves to suffering, okay? So here are the three questions. The first one is, am I working to improve my current situation? What am I doing about it? right? So here I go again with this bias for action. Um, But it's powerful, you know, because even if you do decide to stay exactly where you are, can you make it better somehow by maybe claiming control over what you can in the situation or by asking for what you need? Right. So let's say you're in a situation where you're in a business, um, the business is in trouble, you know, sales are not growing, you're in charge of growing them, your team is quitting, right? Things are kind of tricky at work. Have you asked for what you need to turn that around? Have you asked for the resourcing? Have you asked for the caliber of team members? Have you asked for um, the budget that you need to really get it done? Or are you toughing it out, saying, I'm going to be the one who figures this out with a broken team, without the resources, without adequate you know, management attention on this situation? Um, I know I've been in that exact situation at a certain point in my career. I felt like if I just toughed it out, that somehow I would get like bonus points for having done it with one arm tied behind my back. It's not true. You know, the success model would have been being very clear about what I needed, maybe getting it, maybe not, but at least I would have had control over the ask, right? Over um, being able to demonstrate that I had an understanding of what it would take to be successful. You know, maybe you're in a city that you don't love and you're, you know, you just want to live in California. It would be so amazing to live by the ocean and you live in, you know, I don't know, the Midwest someplace that's just not your happy place. Well, what are you doing inside of your city to really explore and find the, you know, the pockets inside the city that you do love? Maybe every time you go on vacation to California, you find a little coffee shop and you get to sit and, you know, linger over that morning coffee and there's, you know, avocado toast and whatever it is that you love. Can you find a place in your own city that delivers on that same experience? Are you giving yourself the opportunity to find those places and and really pull the most out of your current situation? So that's the first question is, what am I working to improve my current situation? Not just accepting it as it is today. All right. Second question is, am I actively looking for, or at least staying open to alternative paths? You know, this is the one that asks, do you have your eyes up? Are you reading the changing landscape? Are you paying attention to how you feel, right? Are you asking questions about alternatives, Googling things? Are you meditating on or praying about possible changes that you could make or that, you know, could be coming your way? Are you actively looking for things you could do differently, So this is sort of the opposite of the first question. The first question was, if I'm going to stay in this situation, am I doing everything I can to make it better? The second question is really, have I explored alternatives? Let's think about, you know, when we are staying in a job that we don't love because it pays well and has good benefits. Boy, is that one I hear a lot, right? Most of the time when we have decided to stay in that job that we do not love, we don't even like, because it pays well or it has good benefits, we are buying into what I call either-or thinking. 
either we can be happy and fulfilled and enjoy our work, or we can make a decent living and have benefits. But the path through this is to ask the question, you know, how do I find the both and? How do I get both? How do I have a job I love that I'm happy and fulfilled in that also allows me to make a good living and have benefits? Because if we believe that the job we have today is the only job on the planet that will deliver that level of compensation and that benefits package, we are not looking for alternatives that might, you know, sort to a better outcome. But you can't decide if you should tough it out or not unless you've assessed the landscape, you know, and gotten clear about the alternatives. Same thing applies in those other arenas where we might be choosing to tough it out. You know, maybe it's um, as an entrepreneur, we started with a business model and it's not working. We're not getting traction. We're, We're spending money and we're trying to grow and people aren't buying. You know, this is why the pivot has been celebrated in the entrepreneurial space. The pivot is the recognition that we might need to pick an alternative path, that the first business we start may not be the very last business we run. Responding to market dynamics, responding to what people are telling us they like and don't like, what they want more of and what they're not willing to pay for, kind of puts us on that path of steering the entrepreneurial ship to get to the best possible outcome. So we don't have to tough it out saying my business is too small. I don't have enough clients um, or customers. You know, I can't get the pricing that I want or I can't get this produced at a low enough cost. Toughing it out there, continuing to do the same thing and expecting different results, probably not smart, right? Those really are the times when we want to be very clear about, should I continue on this exact path? Is it just a timing game and I need more time in market? Or is this an opportunity for me to make a change, to shift direction, right? And if you haven't asked that question and at least explored what's out there, you don't know yet if you should do that or not. Feel like you're being pulled in a thousand directions? Let's fix that. Download your free rebalancing toolkit and learn how to design an optimized week that lets you feel like you have it all. Get the goods at brilliantbalance.net slash have it all. The third question is really about what other people will think. So the third question is, am I willing to disregard what people will think or say if I make a change? And this may actually be the toughest one, you know, because if you decide not to stick it out, if you decide that actually you need to make a change, um, you need to quit, you know, um, the Q word, then you may face judgment from your friends, your family, your colleagues, Making a choice to quit or to change direction is not culturally celebrated um, most of the time. So the thing that we want to remember here is these other people are not you. You know, they don't have to live with the outcome of the choices in the same way that you do. So if you realize that the only reason you're toughing it out and suffering is so that someone else can have what they want you know, the income that your job is producing or the city that your situation is keeping everyone in, you may have to see if you can learn to tolerate judgment or backlash from some of those people in the name of really liking your life again. Now, this is this is tender territory, and I recognize that. I am not suggesting that you just selfishly go and get all of your own needs met and who cares what anybody else you know, how anybody else has to suffer. But when you find that you are repeatedly the one who is carrying the suffering so that everyone else can benefit, over the long term, it's not sustainable. And sometimes it's sadly timed. You know, how many times do we have to hear about people who stayed in jobs they hated so that they could retire only to die within months of that retirement? you know, not getting to do all the things they were delaying. Or people who are 
you know, just resigned to staying in a job that has them overworked and uninspired. And when you ask them how much longer, it's it's 10 or 15 years. It's not like, oh, I'm going to tough it out because six months from now, this is going to be over. In a world with infinite options, this really just isn't necessary. And at a minimum, it's worth questioning, right? So that if you do choose to tough it out, you're doing that with extreme clarity, extreme conviction that it really is worth the sacrifice that you're making. What I see is that all too often, we haven't even asked the questions. You know, we haven't even gone through this process that I just described today. It's it's choice by default. So I think the the path through it is to be much more intentional, much more conscious about these questions. Because, you know, the mantra of winners never quit and quitters never win, it's really just not true. Sometimes people who quit or pivot or change are the ones who win. And sometimes winners have to know when to call it, right? When it's just time to end the suffering and move on. So the next time you're trying to make a decision about whether or not to tough it out in a bad situation, you want to ask yourself these three questions. One, am I working to improve my current situation? Am I doing everything that I can to optimize this, to make the current situation better? Two, am I actively looking for or at least staying open to alternative paths? You know, do I have my eyes up? Am I assessing the landscape? Am I clear about what's going on around me that there might be a way to sort to a better outcome? And third, am I willing to disregard or tamp down the importance that I place on what other people will think or say if I make this change? You know, am I willing to find my inner compass instead of being driven by the reception that I'm going to get from everyone around me? Those three questions can help you make a more intentional and clear-minded decision about what you want to do next. And yes, there are times when toughing it out is the right call. You know, maybe it's a bad patch in a marriage that has historically been very strong and you're committed to making very strong again. That's worth toughing it out. You know, maybe it's one bad boss or bad assignment where you really can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know that this is temporary and that you can tolerate that period of discomfort, you know. And another time when it is absolutely worth toughing it out is the initial discomfort of anything new, right? Sometimes we get into something brand new and boy, is it uncomfortable always worth toughing it out for a while until we see, is it just the newness that's making me so uncomfortable or is it actually the situation that I'm in? But alternatively, when you find yourself, you know, hunkered down and suffering, not looking for some variable that you can change, not pursuing alternative paths, right? Terrified of judgment or backlash, then you have to remind yourself that there is no law that says that you have to tough it out. Because sometimes quitters really do win. In fact, I know this is true. Because <laughs> once upon a time, I decided to leave a very lucrative corporate job that was no longer lighting me up. I did it by choice. I did it with no exit compensation. Um, and I did it while I was expecting my third child. And boy, did I learn to tolerate judgment, you know, including the judgment from my own inner critic. So in the next episode, I'm going to share that story with you, including a few things that I wish I'd known back then that may have made that transition even smoother. So that's it for today. A thought-provoking set of questions that I want you to play with as you go through your week and Ask yourself, are there places in my life where I am toughing it out without having asked these questions and taken these actions? As you do that, make sure you head over to brilliantbalance.net slash have it all and grab your free rebalancing toolkit. That might be um, a helpful place for you to assess if there's an area where you are toughing it out without even realizing it. And also share today's episode with a friend who you know is toughing it out in some way. I think you'll find she'll thank you. 
Till next time, my friends, go be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com. Thank <laughs> you.